Hi everyone! Today I'm going to explain everything you need to know about hacking and social engineering. Specifically, you'll learn about these attack methods. Malware, ransomware, botnets, phishing, cyber attacks and their impact on cloud computing. Let's get to it. What is hacking? Hacking is simply doing something unauthorized with technology. That's it. As this is a very broad definition, the skill level varies considerably. An example of a very low technical skill requirement is the Nigerian Prince email scam. And an example of a high technical skill requirement is developing specialized software to coordinate infrastructure sabotage with a war effort. A common form of cyber warfare is to disable power and communications before troops advance into a region. Because the wide range of attack methods, the impact of hacking to cloud computing is high. What is malware? Malware is simply software that does something without the permission of the owner. That's it. There is a wide range of types of malicious software like viruses, worms, trojans, scareware, adware, keyloggers and spyware, ransomware and backdoor or rootkits. What is the difference between a virus and a worm? To get a system infected with a virus, the user needs to do something. For example, visit a website that uses an exploit to install the virus on the user's computer. In comparison, a worm has the ability to find and infect other systems without user interaction. What is a Trojan? A Trojan is malicious software that is pretending to be something else. It has to be activated by the user. A good example of a Trojan is an app that you download on your phone. The app does whatever it is supposed to, but it also sends advertising emails to everyone on your contact list. That won't make you popular. What is adware? Adware is malicious software that displays ads, where the hacker hopes to profit from ad revenue. Scareware is software that pretends to be malicious, for example, by displaying scary messages, but it doesn't do anything. What are keyloggers and spyware? Keyloggers and spyware are malicious software that typically stay hidden on your system to collect information. These can be keystrokes to collect passwords and credit card information, mouse movements to analyze web browsing behavior, and also audio and video via a web camera for surveillance. These attack methods are more dangerous for consumers as they can lead to account, credit card, and identity theft. What is ransomware? Ransomware is a type of malware that takes control of a user's data until the owner pays a fee. A recent example is the WannaCry ransomware attack in May 2017. In just a few days, the malware spread to hundreds of thousands of computers across 150 countries. What made WannaCry so dangerous is that it blocked access to computers used in the healthcare industry, like MRI scanners and blood storage refrigerators. Fortunately, a kill switch the hackers left was used to prevent the malware from spreading to critical infrastructure like railway systems and power plants. What are backdoor and rootkits? This is software that takes complete control of a computer system. A fairly common example is when you jailbreak a device. What you really do is use a rootkit someone else built to gain complete control of your device. What is a botnet? A botnet is a large number of internet connected devices, typically in the hundreds of thousands like computers, smartphones, routers, digital video recorders, surveillance cameras, and so on. A hacker takes complete control of a device, typically without the knowledge of the owner, and uses only a portion of the compute and bandwidth to remain undetected. Let's look at the Mirai botnet attack. The Mirai botnet attack 
in September 2016 was the largest botnet attack to date. It was interesting because it used Internet of Things devices, it posed an existential threat to the Internet, it targeted a journalist as a form of censorship, and it only cost about $200,000 a day to shield from it. Eventually, a four-man FBI team in Anchorage found the culprits, three college students in their early 20s. Their original intent was to use the botnet to gain market share for a computer game and to profit from ad fraud. While the people responsible were arrested and pled guilty, there is no mechanism to clean up the botnet. The devices are owned by millions of people around the globe unaware that the device is being misused. We would need warrants and police officers serving them in over 160 countries. This is something that would cost billions of dollars to clean up. As a result, the Satori botnet took over the Mirai devices to replace wallet addresses of Claymore cryptocurrency mining software with their own, making about $442 per day. Since Cryptocurrency is currently not regulated, the hackers have been able to avoid the attention of the FBI. What is social engineering? Social engineering is when you trick someone into doing something or giving you information. That's it. Social engineering also has a wide range of attack methods. For example, pretexting, phishing, baiting, waterholing, and also tailgating, theft, and simple listening. Because social engineering bypasses technical skills by exploiting psychology, it poses a high risk to cloud computing. What is pretexting? Pretexting is simply pretending that something is true, essentially a form of scamming. A simple example is the Nigerian prince email who needs your bank account to transfer his assets and promises you money for your help. What is phishing? Phishing here is spelled with a PH in the beginning. Phishing is when a fraudster pretends to be a legitimate business to obtain private information like credit card info or passwords. An example in 2003 was when users received an email to update the credit card information on eBay. The fraudster sent this email to hundreds of thousands of users hoping that a small percentage would provide their credit card information on a fake website that pretended to be eBay. Spear phishing is a highly customized version of phishing where the fraudster uses some of the victim's personal information to increase the chances of success. What is baiting? Baiting uses media such as CDs or USB drives that have malware to gain access to computer systems. For example, a fraudster leaves a CD labeled salaries in an area with shared access like a cafeteria. This piques the curiosity of the victim who takes the CD to their workplace in a secured area. The autoplay feature then installs the malware on their work computer. What is a waterhole attack? A waterhole is a trusted third-party website or tool that gets compromised or impersonated to gain access to or information from a secured community. For example, in September 2017, the CC Cleaner software was infected with the Floxif Trojan that allowed remote access to over 2 million Windows computers. Ironically, CC Cleaner is a tool that removes malware. Let's look at tailgating, theft and listening. Tailgating is when someone follows one of your employees into the building. They might even flash a fake badge to convince your employee to let them in. Unless your building has additional security measures around staircases and elevators, the intruder has unrestricted access. This brings us to theft. Theft can be a serious breach of security. 
For example, if someone takes a laptop from a desk, they can simply connect the hard drive to any computer and read everything on it, unless your hard drive was encrypted. Also, any printed documents in the cubes are free for the taking. This includes poster-sized architecture diagrams your engineers are especially proud of. Last on the social engineering list is simply listening. Let's take the hypothetical example of your engineers getting a little loud after a few beers at dinner discussing their latest ideas. That would never happen, right? A listener can easily get a good impression of your business plans. This may allow a competitor to pivot and beat you to the market. Not ideal. Let's bring it all together in a coordinated cyber attack. In December 2013, over 40 million credit cards were stolen from Target stores. Hackers gained access to computers of an HVAC vendor via phishing. They then used vendor credentials to infect cash registers with malware they purchased on the black market to collect credit card information. Thousands of stolen credit cards are being sold on black markets every day. These illegal vendors even provide volume discounts and refund policies. Stolen credit cards can simply be used to make purchases and they can also be used to purchase cloud compute to mine cryptocurrencies. Before we finish, let's take a quick look at an attack method that is rarely talked about. Glitching. Glitching is when components of a system are being used out of order, usually timing plays a role. Glitching is a form of hacking but typically requires less technical expertise at the expense of more trial and error. An example from November 2017 is where a cybersecurity firm demonstrated an exploit of the Amazon Key. The Amazon Key is a technology that allows a delivery person to place a package in your home instead of leaving it on your doorstep. By disabling the home Wi-Fi during a delivery, a hacker gains undetected access to the home. Thanks for watching. You can ask me anything on Twitter, via email and in the comments down below. Please like and subscribe. It is a good way to provide feedback and show your support. Thanks again. Bye.